The Morgan Report with David Morgan. David Morgan of themorganreport.com for the week ending 7 April 2023. Good Friday. So first thing I want to do this week is go over the year to date. This is from Bob Johnson of Gold Sheet Mail. You can see the link here is goldsheetlinks.com. And Bob's been doing this for a number of years. I subscribe. It's free. He's an awesome guy. And it really does give a nice perspective of all of the metals and also the energy sector. So year to date, aluminum's off two and a half percent. Cobalt is off 33%. Copper's up about five. Lead's off about nine. Nickel's down about 26. Tin is basically flat and zinc is off 7%. Gold is up 10% on the year so far. Palladium is off 18%. Platinum is only off 5%. As some of you know, I have a spread trade, which is <clears throat> long platinum, short palladium, and that's a long-term trade, and it just keeps working in my favor over time. Silver is up 4%, and the gold-silver ratio is up 5.7%. The HUI is up 18%. The XAU is up about 15%, and the dollar is off slightly. So if you look here, what you want to look at is how much better does the HUI do than gold? And you can see it's not double, but close to it. So even as bad as these stocks are doing, the truth is the conglomeration that composes the HUI is up <clears throat> almost double. And if you look at the HXAU, excuse me, it is up 15%. So it's about 50% better than gold itself so the stocks are especially where we're going when this gold and silver market really take off there'll be a lot of money that pours into the, the mining equities a lot will go everywhere we'll go into the etfs it will go into physical it'll go into leverage contracts and it will go into the miners oil flat heating oils down 20 percent natural gas and I won't name names, someone that was really big on it, and it's off 54%, gasoline's up 12%. And this article came out on FX, and it's stating that gold price forecast, the XAU divided by USD, could aim for 2043 on week, U.S. non-farm payroll report. <clears throat> and uh, I won't read the whole thing, but gold is trading around a flat line. Good Friday trading as bulls are defending the 2000 mark ahead of an all important United States non <clears throat> non farm payroll report. USD is clinging to recovery gains amid a minor rebound in US Treasury bond yields as the market mood remains slightly optimistic ahead of the Easter celebration. So you can read the rest of the article this weekend, but you can see technically we are in that 2000 range, and once we break above it. In a substantive way, the bull market and gold will continue and silver will probably accelerate. Wouldn't surprise me to see both metals kind of stop here for a little while. I know that's kind of contrary to my peer group, but silver traded in the 25 range. It hasn't really closed much above it. It seems to be low volume and Good Friday was a holiday. And having years in the futures markets, I recall because of how badly I was burned a couple of times uh, on these three-day weekends, usually on the open, no matter what the commodity, be it cotton, cocoa, whatever, usually you get hit hard on the open on a three-day weekend. And we'll see. I'm not saying silver and gold are going to whack Monday, but it'll be interesting to watch. Uh, this is from Bullion Vault, <clears throat> recent the 6th of April. Cup and handle pattern drives bullish gold and silver forecast higher, still ahead of U.S. jobs data. Something I have talked about for a long time, and many others have commented on this as well. There's nothing more powerful in technical analysis than a cup and handle formation. And so I will get right to the article here. Now, <clears throat> I know this isn't going to show up very well, and I don't know how to expand it, but you can see my cursor hopefully right here, and this is really the cup. They show it here in this pink, but really it's from here all the way down to swooping bottom and all the way up. And this is the handle. And the way a cup and handle formation works is once it breaks above the handle, then it's up, up and away. 
and that happens quite often. Is it 100% of the time? No. Sometimes they fail, but it's very high probability. So we're sitting there with that in gold, as I just showed previously. I didn't show the cup and handle, but it showed where we are on the price, U.S. dollar-wise, and we are approaching the new high. And once that happens, again, just to reiterate a little bit, I'm not sure we're quite ready for it. I hope that we do. I'm not sure. We'll have to watch. Let the market tell us. Um, if you have to, if you buy gold at 2,100 um, and you feel like you're late, you're buying at a new high, believe me, that's going to look great two or three years from now because it's not going to be 2,100. It's going to be 4,100 or wherever it reaches. But this will be an acceleration phase for a while once we get above there. One of my favorite websites to visit, oilprice.com. They do comment on gold. And this is, I think, from Zero Hedge, actually. Central banks double down on gold buying. You can read this. I've talked about this over and over, about how much gold the central banks are buying, especially in the East, Russia, and China, versus how much is going on in the Western countries. Moving on to silver, silver supply facing pressure as solar energy attracts interest. Well, we've been talking about this for quite some time as well. And solar now takes up about 10% of the entire silver market and it's moving toward probably 12, 13%. So that's the basis of this article. I won't read the whole thing. You certainly could look it up and I suggest subscribing to INN. They're wonderful to work with. They've interviewed me many times and they're really are pretty spot on on what they, um, what they put out for information. And this is a confirmation article, basically saying the same thing <clears throat> from uh, Microgrid. Uh, again, solar is here to stay and what amount of silver the solar panels use. And if you've listened to my weekly perspectives, you know that um, there's a bit of a debate between uh, in the solar industry or those that follow the solar industry, I should say. And that is my friend Chen Lin, which makes a very strong case that uh, the newer technology in solar panels is actually going to use more silver per panel, not less. And this is FX again, and it shows that uh, we're doing pretty good in the options market. And of course, there's a lot of people coming in. On the long side, I'm always a little leery because usually in the options market, the people selling the options make more money than the ones that are buying them. Not always the case. We may stall out here, like I said earlier. Time will tell. And I'll finish up this week with a little bit about platinum. This is from Yahoo Finance, platinum versus gold, which precious metal is the best investment for, res for preserving wealth right now. Kind of interesting, talking about turbulent times in the landscape. Gold is a traditional safe haven. And platinum is a rising star in precious metals. And anyone watching these weekly perspectives and my Premium service, my paid members know quite well when I got into Platinum and why. And we did quite a feature in the Morgan Report, paid edition, uh, about Platinum. So regardless whether you believe it or not or want to take advantage of it or not, it's totally up to you. But uh, this is a pretty good article, and it should, pretty much says what I've been saying, that Platinum is actually undervalued relative to gold. So I'm going to call it a wrap this week on the Morgan Report Weekly Perspective. This is David Morgan signing off, and I'll be back with you next week.